Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Good morning and welcome to St. Isidore's. This morning's opening hymn, Beyond the Days, number 121, number 121. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, we pause. We ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my, my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the ancient saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who chose the blessing of St. Patrick to preach your glory to the people of Ireland, grant through his merits and intercession and th that those who glory in the name of Christian may never cease to proclaim your wondrous deeds to all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading, from, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, 
In a time of favor, I answer you. On the day of salvation, I help you. And I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to restore the land. And a lot the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, Come out to those in the darkness, show yourselves. Along the ways they shall find pasture. On every bare high shall their pastures be. They shall not hunger or thirst, nor shall the scorching wind or the sun strike them. For he who pities them leads them and guides them beside springs of water. I will cut a road through all my mountains and make my highways level. See, some shall come from afar, others from north and west, and some from the land of Syene. Sing out, O heavens, and rejoice. O earth, o earth, break forth into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and shows mercy to his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget her infant, be without tenderness for the child of her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. The word of the Lord. The sponsor of Psalm is, the Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord, the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is faith, faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is gracious and merciful. In your hearts and on your lips, that you may pour the land filled with your proclaim as holy gospel. with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you O lord jesus answered the jews my father is at work until now so i am at work for this reason they tried all the more to kill him because he not only broke the sabbath but he also called god his own father making himself equal to god Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, the Son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees his Father doing. For what he does, the Son will also do. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these so that you may be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so also does the Son give life to whoever, whoever he wishes. Nor does the Father judge anyone, but he has given all judgments to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not come to condemnation, but has passed from death to life. Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God 
and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, he also, so he also gives to the Son the possession of life in himself. And he gave himself power to exercise judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed by this, because the hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out. Those who have done good deeds to the resurrection of life, but those who have done wicked deeds to the resurrection of the condemnation. I cannot do anything on my own. I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Patrick. A lot of people think they know a lot about Patrick, but really they don't know the most important things about St. Patrick. He was born about the year 360, 85 in England, a very wealthy family. Uh, when he was 16 years old, some people came of iron, kidnapped him and sold him as a slave to the Druids in Ireland. And there for six years, he was forced to herd sheep and take care of sheep and so on, treated very badly by his master. But during that time, he turned every day and prayed all day long to God. And after six years, uh, one night he heard a voice saying, the ship is waiting for you, the ship is waiting for you. And he took that as a sign from God that he was to try to escape. Uh, he was taking a big risk in escaping. Uh, if a prisoner like that or a slave would have escaped and been caught, they would have been tortured terribly and probably put to death. But he managed to uh, get away and he managed to get on the boat and get back to England. Um, he was uh, captured along the way and put in prison for a while and then he got back and eventually he was reunited with his parents. And after his experiences of being a, a prisoner or a slave for those years uh, and praying all that time, he decided to become a priest. And eventually he became a bishop and um, he had that calling from God to go back to Ireland that the people were waiting there for him. And so he went back and he began to preach the gospel to the people of Ireland. Now several other saints had already been working over there preaching the gospel. So it wasn't just St. Patrick who converted the whole of people of Ireland, but he certainly converted a lot of them. And the great thing about him is that he forgave his enemies and his master who had been so cruel to him. Uh, and he was very successful in proclaiming the gospel. One of the things that we can be most grateful to St. Patrick for is that he and some of his fellow monks uh, gave us our modern way of going to confession. Up until that time, uh, if you went to confession, the bishop or the priest sat in front of the whole congregation and you came up and confessed your sins and in those days, you confess mainly your really big sins, like in time of persecution, denying your faith so you wouldn't be tortured and put to death, uh, murder, or committing adultery. So they were major sins. You came up and you confessed them. And then after that, you, you didn't get, get absolved right away. You had to show that you were really sorry. So you might have to stand at the door of the church all through Lent or whatever, or maybe for a whole year, asking the whole congregation to forgive you. Because people were very much aware of the fact that if you committed these major sins, you didn't just offend God, but you offend all these other people too. Obviously, if you murdered somebody, you didn't just offend God, but you offended the man you murdered and his family and his community and his friends. Um, so you had to reach your forgiveness for the whole community. And then after a long period of uh, doing forgiveness and asking for forgiveness, then you came forward and then the bishop or the priest gave you absolution. And after that, you had to do a real hard penance. Well, St. Patrick and his monks began to uh, practice uh, more modern confession as we know it today. Uh, younger monks would go to the older monks who were wiser and so on. And they would confess. They didn't commit big sins like murder or adultery, but ordinary sins like being impatient with one another, yelling at one another from time to time, be disobedient to their superior. 
And they would confess that to uh, the older, wiser monks, and they would give him forgiveness and so on. And eventually that evolved into our present form of uh, of reconciliation, where you don't come before the whole public and confess your sins, but you came privately to the priest in the confessional, and uh, he advised you. And then in the name of Jesus, he forgave you and asked God to forgive you. I don't think too many people would go to confession today if we had it to the old, old-fashioned way. It's sad that today many people don't receive the sacrament very often. And that's really sad because Jesus wants to forgive us. And if we confess our sins, even our minor sins, if we confess them, we'll work harder to do better and we'll become God's holy people. If we don't confess our sins in this life, we'll have to answer for them in eternity. And so uh, the next couple of weeks... In preparation for uh, Easter, I'll be hearing most of your children's confessions. And I always tell you, before you go to confession, you have two important things to do. You have to, first of all, examine your conscience and think of all your sins. And then you have to think after you confess them, how are you going to do better so you don't do the same dumb thing again? A few weeks ago, I had so much dirt in my car, I went through the car wash On the way home, I was very careful not to drive through any mud puddles or anything like that because it doesn't make a lot of sense to wash your car and then right away drive through the mud, does it? It doesn't make a lot of sense to go to confession and then come out and do the same dumb things again. So think about what you've done wrong when you get ready for reconciliation and confession and then think about how you're going to do better. Now, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I decide I have to do something, I need reminders. So I'll do something weird, like maybe I'll take my watch from this wrist and put it over here. So every time I look at my watch and it's not there, I'm reminded that I have to work on this. So maybe if you've been disobeying your mom or dad or fighting with your brother or sister, maybe put a little dot on your finger. And every time you'll see that dot, it'll remind you, uh, I have to try to be nice to my my brother or sister or listen to my mom. I had somebody go to confession a long time ago, a man, a grown-up man. And I said, why don't you, for your penance, he is struggling with something he's always doing wrong. I said, why don't you grab one of those little rubber things in our playground? I give you permission to steal one. Put it in your pocket. And every time you reach in your pocket, you'll find it. And it'll remind you, keep working on this. He came back about six weeks later. Father Joe, that really works. So sometimes we need reminders. Um... Uh, to remind us that we have to work on this so we don't do the same thing again and again and again. In any case, today we admire St. Patrick because he forgave his enemies and that mean man who uh, enslaved him and made him herd sheep for six years, uh, and he gave us our modern form of reconciliation. And the sacrament of reconciliation reminds us of how much God loves us. No matter how bad we've been, no matter how much we've sinned, He is always ready to forgive us. And then because God is always ready to forgive us, we have to be like St. Patrick. We have to be willing to offend other people when they have offended us too. So today we thank St. Patrick for the good example he set for us. We ask him to pray for us that we too will try to imitate his example and do likewise. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, you sent your Son, Jesus, to be our Savior, and Jesus came to forgive us our sins. Thankful for his forgiveness, we ask him to help us to forgive others when they hurt us. Grant us this, Lord, in the favors we now ask in Jesus' name. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all our priests and deacons that the Holy Spirit may continue to guide them, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. May God guide all government leaders and church officials to work toward a vision of peace through the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God strengthen us in faith, hope, and love by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we uphold the protection of all the unborn infants and children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for more vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God heal those whose hearts are broken and renew hope in those who experience depression, desolation, or loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died that they may have eternal life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer this Mass this morning for Kevin Cannot. We pray to the Lord. One year ago today, we closed our school, we closed our church. I couldn't go to the hospital, the nursing homes, and so on. And we began that horrible year of the virus. Uh, looking back, I'm especially grateful to all of our teachers. Uh, what a difficult year you had, um, going to happen to life screening and all that, and all that extra work and so many extra jobs here in school. And you students, too, you were so good in, in working with us that way. Um, so I thank all of you and uh, thank your teachers for the hard work they did and your parents for having to put up with you guys all at home all the time and all the difficulties. So let's thank God that we're at this point in our life and we pray that soon the virus will simply be a bad memory and we get back to a normal way of life. So let's just thank God for helping us through this difficult time and ask him to bless all those who work so hard to help us to get through this time. So for all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord O oh God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs, for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. May the power of the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your worth through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. 
fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in our communion song, Gracious God, number 117, in your music issue, number 117.
please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I, I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your heavenly gifts, O Lord, we pray, which you bestow as a heavenly remedy on your people, not bring judgment to those who receive them through Christ our Lord. And may your servants be shielded, O Lord, by the protection of your loving kindness, that doing what is good in this world, they may reach the high, the their highest goal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by your work. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our closing psalm in these days of Lenten journey, number 123, number 123. See you. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. 